Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Palm Top Podcast. Woo! My name is Kyle. My name is Alex. And we do a show where we watch anime. Slice of life anime. Animes where you want the two people to kiss each other, but they don't kiss each other until the very end. Animes where people live their life in school and have to make life decisions because their dream is unclear. Oh, man, what am I going to do with my future? Oh, man, what if she likes me? How do I tell my dog that... I don't really like dogs. And prom's not around. Yeah, no. Because we're oh in God. Japan. We got a prom episode. Could you oh, imagine? Man. The, the European anime yeah. will have the prom episode. Neo Yokio inbound. Yeah, no. Well, let's, and that's the only time we'll ever mention that anime on this podcast. Coming soon. Kyle, what's coming up? Oh, my God. It's, it's time. We're starting a new series. I'm, I'm very excited to announce that we are doing Hyoka. Yeah. Get ready to uh, solve some mysteries that no one ever needed solving because that's the point of this whole show okay so you explain this to me kind of like the b tier of mystery solving <laughs> like ace attorney but there's no stakes it's literally a slice there are of more life stakes with, in a scooby-doo episode that's exciting because <laughs> you you said i know that the protagonist is very blasé and he's very much um a very languid dude and he's just like, I want to just retire. I'm 14 and I've already wasted my life. And that's what I that's why at least I believe I know. And then there's a girl that's like, but I'm super curious about this thing and that thing. And then I know one song in Hyoka because Ooh. it sounds like a Zelda song. It's a background track. Kyle, this is literally how exciting I am. I know a background track in <laughs> Hyoka. Oh, and that's uh, yeah, just I, about I think, it. I think it's when like a question is asked i think is the music you're thinking about but yeah. i i need to preface this was i have not watched this since it came out uh i should have gotten a year for that i'll probably have that when we come back but like if i had to ballpark it five years yeah this is some this is some older kyoto animation we are coming right off of haruhi which is another kyo anything hashtag kyoto cast they always have such intricate animation and they never outsource their work. So it always does have this Nintendo level mentality behind it. Right. And kind all their like eye, the eyes kind of look the same. And the eyebrows are like thin pencil lines. Yep. It, and if they don't look like k they look like Clannad. And they either have no bangs or all bangs. And I, they're always slice of life, aren't they? Um... Air. I'm gonna say no because I feel like there's one outlier, but I can't think of it. Dragon Maid. <laughs> Dragon Maid is just about as much slice of lifey as you can get. Damn it. Um, Lucky Star. Damn it. Um, hang on. Um, oh, Nietzsche Joe. <laughs> damn it. Full Metal Panic. Damn it. Well, all right, all right. No, you know what? I'll give you Full Metal Panic. That one was kind of out there. There were mech fights in that. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. They only did the spin-off of Full Metal Panic, oh. which was a slice of life one. Oh. Damn it. Here's Hyoka, I guess. And welcome back, everybody. We just watched Hyoka episode one and two, dubbed. So I like this. I like this a lot, just like going right into it. First two episodes, really strong introduction. If we're going to get really uh, laconic and just go. Oh, yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you. The first time I watched this uh, hooked me right away. Like, I'll buy Kion for the character very quickly, but I bought this character as a high schooler a lot faster. Oh, definitely. Uh, there's definitely times in my life where I very much felt like Areki. Like, I, I immediately was drawn into this character of, like, you're not going to be able to fight him. This is the way he is. He wants to consume as little energy as possible, get the day done. He has his own motto. It might as well be on a T-shirt. If, if I don't have to, I don't want to. And if I have to, I'll do it as quickly as possible. And, it's like... Uh, I think in the, uh, in the subversion, they went with... Uh, oh god, I can't remember the exact thing, but it's like, uh, I will make sure I spend the least amount of energy doing any task I am asked to. Oh, I have to walk to the other side of the building? No, you, you can just you can just do that. I will wait here. Hodoro would really benefit from mopeds and segways inside the class halls. 
because if you D- too much to be asked too much it actually going to buy it would be too much energy oh yeah we also have chitanda who is the more lively character that pulls hodoro into her world and kind of pulls him out of his shell a bit and then we have satoshi satoshi i'm learning i've been pronouncing that wrong all along who is the childhood best friend and you have mayaka who is who for a second i thought was going to be phyllis from animal crossing but she wasn't she wasn't rude at all <laughs> that's a weird pull they introduce her and it's like no not her anyone but her and i was like oh no is she gonna be like phyllis you could almost call her a pseudo antagonist she's really the only one who will fight oreki on anything i could see that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um one thing I really need to say about this cast is uh, they're one of the few casts I've seen that actively challenge the main character in any instance of like what they do. So like if they ever think that uh, Oreki's not like doing the best he can or like really softballed it for something or like really phoned it in, they'll just call him out right away. Which yeah. is something you really don't see in anime a lot. It's usually just like, oh, I need to respect their wishes because I, I, I'm very respectful. Follow like, blindly. No, you could have done better. Sadashi and uh, Chitanda both are the opposite sides of magnets, pulling Oriki out of this like very lazy lifestyle. I don't know. I, I think I might have to argue with that there. Uh, definitely Chitanda's pulling him out. But I literally think, pulling I him think, out. Uh, Satoshi is kind of just like, you know what? This is the only opportunity I've seen to get him out of his own funk land. And he's just like, he's like pushing Oreki's back as they go but along. I would, I would argue he's a passive magnet in that he is, he knows Please him inside explain now. Explain passive magnet. Sure. Kyle, for example, I want you to play Final Fantasy IX. That will Really happen. badly. But exactly because I always push you to do it. You don't want to do it. So if I was more passive and suggesting things or going, you know, Kyle, it really is in your best interest to play Final Fantasy IX. The way he talks to Oraki is very much like, oh, man, today when you uh, spent your time talking to Chitanda, instead of leaving to go home, you really spent a lot more energy. You know, you really seem to be going down different. Like he's kind of pushing Oraki to go down a different path. He's trying to get his friend into a better situation without alarming him it's very under his nose it's like it's not only is it under his nose but he's also like holding it in front of his face at the same time oh yeah <laughs> he's such <laughs> he's a fun it. character I, I i definitely uh i definitely see a little bit of myself in him sometimes in, in satoshi or in oraki uh in satoshi mm-hmm. uh, and i've i felt like i've been both of them they're very yeah. very relatable mm-hmm. I don't. I, then, I can't say I've been much of a Chitanda though. Literally, what a strange character. I've I've been Chitanda in that like I've the the desire to understand something has consumed me. But I've also been Oreki in that literally I've been ensnared by a person yep. to the point where like the visual chemistry of these two characters is off the charts. It's out of control because <laughs> physically and mentally. Physically, oh, clearly, um, Chitanda is snaring Oraki with her hair going, hey, how the f*** <gasps> did I get locked in this room? You have to tell me. Oh, also, every time also- I ask a question, my eyes are going to shine like the night sky in, like, a farmland. I have to know. Um, that's in Japanese. It's a uh, catchphrase, right? It's uh, I'm very curious. Uh, sure. Yeah. There's, there is a sentence that she always says. And here they seem to mix it up a lot and they go, I have to know, I must know, I need to know. I like that. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely like that, especially with the, the voice actress. I feel like she does a good job uh, playing this weirdly intelligent but kind of meek girl. I don't know, I, I, I've always kind of liked uh, kind of like the whimsical nature of Chitanda, even though she's someone who, like she said, has no problem passing a standardized test. It's like, Seeing uh, the, the the typical like robotic, I can do. I'm the top of the class guy, but like, oh man, I have a whimsical part. How come you didn't notice that you were locked inside of a room? I was looking at this really old house and figuring out why it was there. Like, 
<laughs> it's I didn't hear noises because I was looking at a house. Um, is, is your brain OK? Their designs complement each other to every degree. You were telling me and they kind of allude to it in episode two that Hodoro does not want a rosy life. He wants to stick in a gray. He's fine with his life. life. The way it is. Hodoro dresses in earth tones in school, but Chitanda dresses in monochrome. And then when they're outside of school, Chitanda dresses in rose and Hodoro dresses in neutral. Okay. So in school. This means things to me. In school, they're literally dressing the opposite to a- appeal to each other. Also, Chitanda's eyes are purple and his eyes are green. The literal contrast. Oh, man. They don't, like, they don't try to make that really obvious all the time. I'm pretty sure the first shot of them meeting is like her eyes, his eyes. I, her yes. eyes, his eyes. My brand, my brand. Old house. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now I need to ask, did I properly portray <laughs> uh, what, what kind of mysteries we'd be running into as sub Scooby-Doo? Oh, man. Who checked out this book? <laughs> like, I it's have so to know. hard to describe this animated people because we literally spend what, like twenty minutes on this book thing? <laughs> who checked? Who? Oh man! Like, I'm glad I found you inside this room and you weren't harmed. Hey, who? Uh, who? Who locked me in this room? I have to know. I have to know who who checked out this book. There was possibly a ghost upstairs, but enough about that. So who, what's a secret club? Yeah. A bar above nothing, which is perfect for Oriki. Mm-hmm. The interesting thing about this series is uh, it's not so much that Oreki is like pulled out of his comfort zone by mysteries. It's uh it's Chitanda's wonderment that kind of pulls him out. It, it's so magnetic that he's just, he, he realizes if he looks her in the eye and she says she wants to know, he can't help himself but answer yes. Mm-hmm. And this is a rule it, that comes about that if you're looking closely, he will purposely make up a fake mystery like he did in the first episode or try to hide his eyes with the book like he did uh, in the yeah. second episode, he pulls his hair down. Yep, that, that that's. I don't know if it's stated later on, and that's why I know this rule. But uh, that seems to be the ongoing thing: is if they lock eyes and she's curious, he has to answer. Okay, that's you get this vibe that like the framing of the shots very much puts them at eye level all the time. When she has him against the door, going, "Hey, you have to talk to me." You can't just leave the room. She's shorter than him, but their framing is always very much eye level in that he gives her what she wants, which is mystery, intrigue, and she gives him what he wants, what he needs, which is physical communication. And getting covered in hair and flowers. That shot will probably stick with me for another week. <laughs> you were just like screaming as it was happening. I was, I was very much just screaming in <laughs> Spanish. Okay. So uh, we, we, we end on a very interesting note where uh, Chitanda says that she has a confession, uh, a type of confession that she's going to uh, say to Oreki. So any, uh, any guesses? Obviously, it's tied into why she's in the literary club. We didn't even touch on that, which is... It's really not that of, relevant. Hey, sister, sister wants me to... Uh, preserve the classic lit club because i've got nothing else to do she was also in there why um it's not important but it clearly is i think it's something to do with that and maybe um or he can help her solve a mystery that has been plaguing her about the school mm-hmm. or about her past or about something else or i just i just i really need to know where half of my socks go when i do my laundry I need to know so many opportunities with here because like I don't I don't know I always walk into shows like this with a complete open mind and how they can handle it because obviously the show could go with um oh yeah I totally don't like you or anything but then I do but every time I think it's like that this show continues to surprise me so you know what maybe it is a love confession this show does handle love a little bit differently 
I mean, you literally get introduced to Ibarra and they just straight up say, like, yeah, she has an open crush on Fukube. And they like both know about it. They literally yeah. talk about it next to each other. Also, can we talk about the library scene <laughs> where everyone's shouting and then halfway through, Mayaka goes, oh, by the way, shh, By the way, I'm the library. librarian. Please shut the fuck up. I, I have a ton of notes and I don't even want to go over them. I'm, I'm yeah, no, totally dude, One in. of the best things about this series is uh, some animes you can just say like, oh, I bet this is going to happen next and then this happens. But like this one, it's like, hey, what? strange mundane mystery that you're going to solve next week. I have literally no idea. There's one where, uh, oh, how did that guy pass by in the hallway if I saw him here? Like, literally that. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, he would have had to go up the stairwell and do this, and did he go through a window? I don't... How is a show with that as its main linchpin the most interesting thing I've watched it's all week? so weird. Can Daichi it's... eat your heart out? I will. I will gladly come back to this club next time episodes three and four kyle i have to know what happens next i don't know <laughs> I, I'm, I'm being i'm being like completely serious with you uh there's a lot about this show i forget because of its strange mundane uh mystery per episode thing that i just i completely forget I'm going in this pseudo blind. Why is Oraki's sister in India? Because she likes elephants. Is that how we end it? <laughs> I don't want it to end like that. <laughs> <laughs>